Hey everyone, welcome to my show, my so-called fabulous. I listen to that jingle and I love it every time. Love it, love it. That's the one of one of the many things. Well, it many or a few things that I've done in my life correctly is choose that jingle. So everyone, welcome to the show today. We are talking about something you have, my followers, my listeners, so many of you have asked me time after time again, talk to us about dating. Well, y'all, I'm not the girl to do it, but I have a fabulous friend here and we actually met through social media because that's what we do these days. Everyone, welcome to the show, Paige Walker. Welcome, welcome. Hello, thank you. Happy to be here and talk about all things dating. And so much more. Whatever you throw at me. Yes. <laughs> so we met, gosh, before I always say BC before COVID because oh, we're BC. both uh, content creators yes. and bloggers and influencers. Is that what we're calling ourselves? They do. Go I don't on. know. When I say that, I feel like a cheese wad. Like I'm like, <laughs> I'm an influence. Sometimes I say I do like affiliate marketing because people are like, what are your jobs? Yeah. S with an S. I know, I know. Because you have Paige Walker Photography. That <gasps> is the main job. Your main. That's the big the big, big baby. Yes. And 12 years, right? 12 years. Oh my gosh. And we just opened, I say we, me and the same girl have worked together for 10 years, but I finally um, put on my big girl panties and purchased a commercial property. Yes, you So did. I moved my studio into that over off Magnolia and that job, I've just got to stick with that. As a single mom, like that's the one that's making me the most yes. cheddar, if you yes, will. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. And then exactly. the affiliate marketing, the influencer marketing, that kind of stuff, it, it can be really hit or miss. Some months are great and some months I'm like, that was a kind of a waste of my... Exactly. Exactly. Whatever. It is. It is. And I always tell people, pe well, people ask me, friends, don't you love that as a hobby? I'm like, hobby my mm. ass, y'all. Making bone broth is a hobby. I know. Okay? I mean, seriously. Yes. But it is. Some months are great, some are not so great, but more than anything, love it. And so bringing you on this podcast because I um, have wanted you on here for years, but you are a single mom. Mm -hmm. I and my audience, your audience, so many have gone through this. This woman has four children. And you were in the I carpool do. line for, or you were in carpool this morning for, <laughs> it was about two hours of carpooling. I and mean, all I was things. listening to um, my favorite Nate Bargatze, Nate Land podcast. The, one of the little things that makes me laugh. And um, it was just a yeah. long, basically a road trip. Yeah. And I got to do it again. So four children from the same father, because yes. we're talking to single moms and dads too. So I specify that. that, like anytime I meet a new guy on the app, they're like, how many kids do you have? I'm like, four kids, just same dad. Like, please keep in yes. mind. Same yeah. dad. Not that that would be a huge deal, mm -hmm. but I get, I just get worried that they think I'm like, I have a kid with you and 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 you're next, you're next, mister. No. No. Yeah, no. So I'm just like four kids, same dad, married a really long time. Wow. Chapter closed, moving on. Moving on. Okay. So you were married to Zach for 15 years. Yes. Um, what happened to, what was the catalyst of I'm done? Well, it was a pretty, almost too easy marriage where it was one of those where did, we didn't really argue. We didn't really do much together. We didn't really, I think um, going back so I got married at 22, got engaged at 21 in college. We did the whole candle pass in the sorority. Oh, like, dear. I mean, that's so young to make those big decisions. And he's great. And he was a really sure. good choice. And I really, I mean, obviously you get married thinking this is forever. But the people that we were almost 20 years later, oh. not only gr had we grown so far apart, I just felt like, oh, okay, we made it to 15 years. And we were both just kind of like, we... We barely know each other at this point. Mm -hmm. And to think of going another possibly 40 years, right. it just felt so roommate. And mm -hmm. the more we went to therapy and kind of right. sifted through our emotions and where we were at emotionally, and it just was, I guess, like ran its course. I mean, right. it sounds like, oh, you got married. You should stay married forever. But I probably have the con controversial opinion that I feel like it takes balls to get out of something like that. And if you're not happy, there's absolutely no reason to stick around. Not at all. For what? And you know, we had uh, my second husband. I've, I have three. Seven. Greg and I, and I have seven so between the two of us. None of you judging, please. <laughs> no Greg judging said, ever. Greg said none of them were his fault. So we've got that going on. So, um, uh -huh. you know, I think it, as well, You we talked about it earlier. When 
I married the first time. I'm certainly not the person I am now, of course, oh, in the not 20s. Even close. Oh, not heavens. Even close. Don't you wish we knew more? The, knew what we did then now. However, I we had a therapist that said, you know what? It's time to say goodbye to each other because what are you teaching your children as far as relationships? Yes. You know what I mean? What is a relationship? Is it a roommate situation? Is it love? And um, and you and I will get some flack from this because people say stick it out and well, do whatever. They can do that. And yeah. that is their sure. journey. Exactly. <laughs> it's like not everyone wants to do intermittent fasting like I do. Exactly. You do your own diet. Yes, exactly. Um, I think the way that it went down in my family was so peaceful. And my therapist said, you should probably go ahead and get a divorce because at this point you can have the divorce you want. It can be on your terms. No one's furious. No one's right. Well, you're up. You know, it yes. was very okay. So we were able to do it with um, no attorney. So we just mm -hmm. agreed on some stuff and did it online. And it really does not have to be the world shattering, right. you know, battle that so many people do go through. And some of that I think is knowing when. It just isn't going right. to bring much value to your life anymore. And the kids have done great with it. They get more quality time with me, more quality time with Zach. Mm -hmm. They have just, it was almost too simple. It was just like, well, when is everyone going to freak out and start, right? you know, <laughs> cutting their arms up or whatever you think about, like <laughs> yeah. poor kids going through stuff like that. They're like, oh no, it's fine. It's great. I like, know. And you know, I'm, I'm not sure what age your children were at the time, but Kennedy's now 23. My only child was 23 and she was very young when her dad and I divorced. And the one thing that really did um, scare me was at one point during Christmas, she goes, it's great, divorce is great. I'll try it someday. If it doesn't work, it's great because I get two Christmases and I get all these gifts yes. and I have two rooms. And I'm like, that's not reality. You know, of course yes. she's what, four or five. And so that mindset, but she's, you know, we we co-parent extremely well while we're almost finished. But do you ever finish parenting? Um, well, I've got a 15 year old, 13, 10, 15. and six. Mm -mm. So I don't know. I mean, well, I'll, I'll have Zach in my life forever and I adore him and I am happy to call him family and glad sure. we have our co-parenting relationship. But um, the kids just done really, really well. But I've heard them say the same thing, like yeah. two Christmases. This is great. We get, now we get to go to dad's tomorrow for more gifts. Like it's right. It's like, okay. Yeah. There's some, there's some bonuses there, kids. Exactly. But I mean, obviously there's struggles too. That's true. Okay. So you divorce and when did you entertain dating again? Was it something you wanted to do? Did you, were you, was it, was it at first of mind or um, not at first at first i felt like i just so beat down from the whole emotional stress mm -hmm. of the whole situation that it took me um a few months to really be like okay i think i could date and it was mostly just a curiosity dating not like how now i'm dating with intention and if you don't mark all the boxes and make me feel a certain way and value me and blah 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 you i'm sorry we're going to have to end things so when I first started dating, it was more like, who is even out there and what is going on? And last time I dated, it was the this, the nervous phone call. Hi, uh, is Zach, Zach there? Like it wasn't texting and no. there wasn't even texting. No. So just kind of entering into a whole new world. I, I got into it pretty fast and I did. <laughs> I went ahead and got the app because the app popped up on, on my daughter's iPad. So I was like, well, if Zach's, if Zach's on there. <laughs> I'll go ahead too. Cause at the time I was living upstairs, but we were still in living together, uh -huh. but it was, we knew it was done. So right. it was okay. But yeah. So then I started matching with people and talking to people and it just felt so strange. And it seemed like, how would you ever find someone in this yes. haystack of people? Like, exactly. Is there a needle? I don't know. I know. So, so that's how it started. I just kind of started slowly on the apps just, and it was like COVID. So mm -hmm. there was a couple of FaceTime dates, but like, what is that going to do? You know? So there wasn't a whole lot of dating. I know. And you know, I, so, so my, golly, I'm trying to think. So my second divorce, I didn't want to ever date again. Yeah. I really didn't. Um, and I have to ask you this too, but once I did start entertaining the dating, because I had a therapist said, hey, why don't we be by ourselves for a little while? Because yeah. you always have a boyfriend. I feel like therapists love to say that. Yeah. Is and that I'm a like, thing? Well, I don't know. I hear that a lot. And yeah. I hear people say, why don't you just take some time for yourself? I'm like, well, I, I took like a decade for myself. <laughs> I had my kids. I built my business. I yes. did good, the girls trips, the girls nights out. I did everything almost for myself, not mm -hmm. trying to be selfish, but that's just 
right. what was happening and he was working on his career. So I'm like, I kind of have everything I've ever wanted and I would love a partner. And if it doesn't work out, who freaking cares? Right. I don't, but I like the, I like to at least cast that net and try. Sure, sure. So when I, when I started, I did dabble because it was actually kind of fun. At the end it of the fun. work day, I would do, it was, I mean, all online. It, this was nothing phone. I couldn't not, not qualify for that, but it was match eHarmony, which was a pain because you had, you couldn't see a picture and I'm sorry. Oh, you know, forever. And then what uh, do they just want you to like, be like, he's a Christian. I'm a Christian. Let's get married. <laughs> yeah. Right, that's, that's right. horrible. And the other one was farmersonly.com. And I'm like, okay, all right, no, that's not it. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's it, but I, the great farmers. Yeah. But um, that was the three that I, and I had a good time on Match. And I think you said too, I read that you said, you have met a lot of great men online or in, on so these apps. So many. So many good so men. So I know a lot of women will, will complain and, oh, it's terrible. I'm like, are you just like a glass half empty kind of person because mm -hmm. i am mind blown by how many quality yeah. successful solid dudes are in a very similar situation as zach and i are it's like neither one of us are terrible we just right. are Not kind of in the be. next phase mm -hmm. exactly and so there it really isn't anything to be that terrified of i know people are like i'm so scared it's not bad it's not bad at all i know it's not like going to a, I and mean, go to a bar Think, I mean, go to the, the bar difference. and there might be one person there that you think is okay right. but whenever you're swiping through people you can set so many di like okay r is religion a preference or do you want them to have kids not kids is it okay if they drink is it okay you click sure. all these little things and then up comes the ones that are in your preferences so yeah i think it's genius and it's been a really great experience for me also i've gotten burned a lot too which is part of it really did you meet the last two i've met them both michael and jeff yes so you michael did. i met when in my kind of like who cares we're just playing around phase i put my app's location to Santa Barbara, where my brother lived at the time. And it matched me up because I was thinking, oh, if I go visit him, I can go maybe like hang out with this person too, if I meet anyone. And it would just be kind of like a casual, like a fun person to have near my brother. So it matched me up with um, Santa Monica boy, mm -hmm. man, whatever, uh, <laughs> Michael. And then we hit it off and started, he was very quirky and very, um, he was a director and cinematographer. And we had a lot of commonalities in our career and he was just it for, for me at that time was just a great find because mm -hmm. he was also had been through some hard stuff with his marriages he'd been married twice and we just hit it off for whatever reason people are like i don't get it i'm like well, mm -hmm. i'm sorry there's it's really not, nothing to get yeah, yeah it just was it just worked so um he actually ended up moving to fort worth and then soon after that i kind of knew Ugh. Ugh. this isn't a forever thing gosh you know so sorry yeah so sorry, sorry you moved, moved. <laughs> <laughs> so that um but now he's in dallas and he's, i think he's still in dallas and he's very happy with the creative scene here or whatever so it didn't end up being too terrible oh my gosh. but we did have i think we were together like a, over a year maybe a year and a half like i gave it a good shot and we had so much fun together like there were so yeah. many great things yes the most like hilarious laughing all night slumber party like chit chat like we had so much fun so it was a lot more than just the hardcore fights that we would have. It was right. one of those high highs, low lows. What's right. it gonna be? What's it gonna be? And I can't, I can't do that. I get right. so anxious. Mm -mm. Yeah. Cannot do that. So that all. ended, and then I was single for not that long. I I got back on the apps pretty soon after, and um, pretty quickly met three guys that I connected with, and then it kind of went from those three, trickled, 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 till I got to the, the one who got the final rose. <laughs> and then we were together about seven or eight months and that ended in may so i'm back out there i know and i met him you and i were at, uh, both involved in an event and i really could see in your eyes i thought that was it i really thought that i was thought it. that was it too you and did. i i loved him so much like oh. it wasn't i know Ugh, it hurts Ugh. but it wasn't one of those that was like oh let's just we'll just see like i, I was like this is it mm -hmm. this is for sure it this is we talked about marriage He'd actually sold his house because he was going to live partially with me and partially at his. He's got like a ranch kind of thing. Right. Um, and then just a kind of a breakup out of seemingly nowhere. Right. I was like, oh, no. But. Well, let me ask you this. So Greg and I met, I think I've shared this with you, through Selective Search. Yes. And at the time, um, oh, my gosh, this we've been married 12 years so let's back up 15 years when i actually 
my best friend saw the woman that owned it out of Chicago on Oprah. Mm -hmm. So I got in the database and put myself in the database. I did not pay. I didn't have the money to pay yeah. to be one person pay, one partner paid. So um, the first one, and there wasn't, I was in, living in Austin, so there was not a lot of eligible bachelors at the time there. Mm -hmm. um, so I went out with one. I uh, know. I mean, he seriously told me that his girlfriend um, had an affair with her yoga instructor, which was female. And I was like, okay, oh. he turned this woman. So isn't yeah. that fabulous? So, like, mm. okay. So, and, and, and I knew immediately and I said, get me off this. It wasn't and an app. With it was selective off. search, do you get to see what they look like before? This guy you did. Okay. So once I get myself out of that, I'm like, I'm not doing this anymore. This is just not, I'm not prepared for this. Yeah. Um, they're like, okay, so I date this other man for four years on and off, on and off. Yes, that I is know. Long. That's a long that time. That's longer than I've made of long anyone. Long time. <laughs> long post time. Probably four years too long, but um, <laughs> fabulous man, but we just didn't oil and literally, literally oil and water. Yeah. So um, anyway, so I put myself back into selective search just on a whim, just saying I needed, a, I probably needed an ego boost. That's yeah. probably what I needed. Yeah. Well, lo and behold, they um, contacted me about Greg. I said, I need a picture. And they're like, no, we don't show pictures of clients. I went, well, you did the last one, so I'm out. So anyway, long story did short. Did they show you after you said I'm finally, out? Finally, they looked at, they sent, went to Greg because he had seen me and he liked what he saw. But um, he's like, oh, great, she, but she needs a picture. He's like, got it. So on his Blackberry, he sent a picture to the people. <laughs> he was like at the original gym at selfie. TCU looking like a nerd oh my and gosh. for sure i said no i'm like no i'm totally huh. out I'm you're out. like he's hideous he's hideous i'm, I'm out I'm immediately no <laughs> talk to him on the phone he's so cute how did you he's say great. no i don't know he was acting he was he was acting like a scooby so um. <laughs> anyway it was i'm i talked to him i saw him in fort worth literally said i told you this i will never get married not doing it not doing it walked off the elevator at omni saw him said i met my husband <gasps> knew immediately and damned if we weren't married a year and a half later. So it can happen. Oh, it can happen. And landed it in can. my lap. And my lap was not open. I think that's like kind of how it goes. It does. Or you hear people say that. And I'm like, well, cool. when? I still got to put myself out there, though. So. Yes, you do. You do. Which I have been very good about. Which yeah. you know, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable, really <sighs> looking for someone. It, it's, it is easy to get hurt. But I'm not talking like hysterical crying hurt. I'm just like, ugh. Like the gut punch of. Mm -hmm. uh, it didn't work out like yeah. start here we go again here we go again back to square whatever negative five right yeah. well let me ask you this because greg was very very um he was adamant about he wanted to find a woman he was dating with purpose that did not have a child living at home kennedy mm -hmm. was in fourth grade and um, he made an exception. He really made an exception. He was like, okay, all right. They were cool. They had hit it off. But there was that um, there was that population that did not want me to have a child living at home. Yes. Because his children were gone. And gone. they wanted to just set and all Correct. that. Correct. Mm -hmm. So how are you dealing with that? Do you have that with me, potential? Um, not necessarily. I feel like well, Jeff's daughter was 22, and I just like loved her. Um, mm. Love, it's no, it's no past tense. Love her. So there's another. She thing. was Bonded already out. The family. I know. Yep. She yep. was already out of of his house and all that. And so that was easy because he understood parenthood, but also didn't have anyone where he was like, oh well, I have her this weekend, you know. But the biggest struggle I think is not guys being like, ooh, four kids, no thanks. It's more like. Okay, you're 50 50 and I'm 50 50. Are the 50 50 is going to like be able to work out in a way that we're going to be able to see each other enough? Which, of course, Zach's easy and we could switch it around if I really was like, okay, I need to spend more time with this person and mm -hmm. I only have two days a month. It's not going to be very easy to get to know them this way. Um, it's more that. Um, or what I'm finding is I might think a guy looks great on the app and then I scroll a little bit and I see it says, um, children and says maybe someday and I'm like mm. no because I don't want to I haven't like I mean I could still get pregnant if I wanted to but I do not <laughs> so I just make sure to say like I'm not going to have any more kids like if that's important to you or sure. it's not even neat gosh because no thank you I'm in such a good place with my parenting and if I did meet someone that was like 
I want to travel here and do this. And that. Okay, well, I've got half the time that I can do that. Wow. And so it's not, it, I think it it would be a workaround mm-hmm. if someone is open-minded to it. If they're closed-minded, hopefully they didn't pick me anyway because it says right. I have kids. I don't say how many. I usually right. wait on that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, I wanted another. And Greg, all the way up to the day we got married, said, of course we will. Of course we will. <gasps> and then he said, I was courting you. I was just trying to get you to sleep with me. Why would you think I'd say <laughs> the anything? The bait and switch. <laughs> That's so cold. <laughs> it was a bait and switch. But no, uh, you know what? It worked out perfectly for us. And um, I'm glad we, you know, it happened. It happens for a reason. Yes. For sure. But I was wondering, because I've had some friends say that to me, that they're like, well, they don't like that I have a child. And like yeah. I said, I've been through that. But you know what? It's the right person, don't you yeah. think? Most of the people in the age range I'm looking at are in a pretty similar spot. Mm-hmm. They have kids around the same age. The only thing that does stress me out some is if they have a kid that's like two. Ooh. Like, oh, I don't want mm-hmm. to deal with that. But most of the kids are around the same because I've got the big span of six to 15. Anywhere in that or older it seems yeah. easy and fine and maybe slightly younger. But I don't want like a baby or a Diapers. toddler. Diapers. Diapers. Oh. No, no, no. That's just a whole different kind of parenting. Like, Mm -hmm. I'll take my four kids that are pretty much self sufficient over a one toddler all day long. You don't want the child in diapers or your boyfriend in diapers? No, I don't want the boyfriend in diapers. (laughs) Do not. Either one at all. No. Well, you know, I mentioned mentioned having someone in my life before Greg. And um, fabulous, seriously. I mean, you and I would not date evil people. Well, I married one, but never mind. That's that we, we do digress on that. She married but, uh, a murderer. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it was. Yeah, no, that's a different podcast. That's the best y'all. story. <laughs> <laughs> but um, seriously, I um, I really do think at different phases of your life, and I was in my forties, and um, sometimes, Paige, I look back and go, "Who was that psycho?" I behaved so poorly. I didn't have the tools, I don't think. And I didn't react. Mm -hmm. Um, I overreacted. I underreacted. I was passive. I just like, and then when you push each other's buttons. That is like so, yes, 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 yes. Talk to me about that. Having been in a relationship that didn't really trigger me ever, I just kind of ran my show, did my thing, lived with a whatever. So easy, so easy emotionally. Very few really stressful things like that to going to a relationship that almost feels like your first love all over again where you're like learning it all so i had to figure out like what is triggering to me and why am i acting like i'm 16 like how i used to act with my 16 year old boyfriend why is this so devastating to me and what are some tools so i can like heal this trauma or at least get some some skills to not like not stoop to these low arguments Mm -hmm. and so then having been through that with two different guys Um, I was able to see, I I couldn't be like Greg and just be like, you know, it was their fault. I had nothing to do with it. I was, Mm -hmm. I had to look and see like, okay, what is the common denominator here? Well, for me, strangely, because I don't feel like I should have abandonment issues or rejection or whatever. When at both of them, their kind of communication style or argument style would be leave. And then I'd be away left being like, I just, I need to like talk about this or at least you say i'll be back in an hour we can talk about it so then i just was left feeling so just i don't care you're not worth it and the, and it was stuff that i didn't even would have never thought i'm like i'm such a confident girl that's not gonna bother me but it does when you get into this different kind of headspace that really can show you some raw emotions that you were unaware that you even had oh, I know. so the the friends i have that have been married forever and they're just like oh, this is dramatic or this or that. I'm like, you can't even relate. It's like starting all the way back over with your 15 year old boyfriend and learning how to love in a mature way. Mm -hmm. And it is tricky. Um, I, I, I can't even imagine even my marriage. I look and go, gosh, why did I behave that way? Yeah. You know, but, um, and, and I'm sure just listening to you, you are believing in therapy. I 100 oh, yeah. coaching for sure. I um, had, had so many great coaches and therapists on the show and it's a tune up and it's a, it's a look at reality and mm-hmm. it's a look at yourself in the face and in the mirror and go, okay, what did I do? Because I'm telling you, well, the first one, I don't think that was my fault. But sometimes <laughs> you're just kind of bullied into it, but still I could have responded better even in those situations. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I did and I was like, I killed it. I was so good. And then sometimes I would just go right down there and be like, you know what? You know, I would just get, it's just, why did I do that? So that is part of my intentional dating is trying to find someone that will understand how to speak my love language and not, because if I've got the filled cup, I'm not going to freak out. 
Mm -hmm. Very unlikely. Mm -hmm. But when it's already empty and then something's happening and right. it just can send you on a, it's as a Khloe Kardashian says, sometimes a bitch snaps. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes a bitch snaps. So, this bitch has really snapped yeah, several times. That was not. It's, uh, I and I know everybody has their moments with arguments mm -hmm. and relationships with their husband or boyfriend, but it is really hard to learn a new person. Mm -hmm. You know, um, your audience, mine, um, Jenny's uh, with, with Style Duplicated is, I mean, around 18. We have young followers. Mm -hmm. and, and and your fabulous mother, Laura, thank you so yes. much for um, following along. I love her. She's your uh, biggest fan. She's and my biggest fan. fan. And so seriously, from the age span of 18 to 60 plus, let's what is your advice for all of the women? Well, let's talk about women out there. Right. My daughter, 23, she's so over it. She's just like, are you joking? Yes. I mean, in their 20s, I mean, there's a little So bit. That, that is a little tricky in the 20s because it's like, do you want to go quite a bit older or do you want to just hope that you find one close to your age mm -hmm. and you happen to find one that's kind of already emotionally mature? Right. You don't know. But I think with really across the board, whenever I talk about stuff on um, Instagram, on stories or whatever, I feel like girls that are 20 will be like, yes, yes. that is happening to me. And even women like in their 60s that are dating are like, oh, okay, like that's right. what I can e expect. Pretty much it's mm -hmm. the same thing. I feel like it's, I thought it was going to be a more mature level of dating. I didn't know. I mean, there still is all the games and all the... Well, if you, if they pull back, do I pull forward? Do oh, I pull back? Do I, the who chase. cares? I get so annoyed by that because yeah. I'm very just transparent. And mm -hmm. if that, if that bites me in the ass, so be it. Right. But I think just not being afraid to put yourself out there mm -hmm. and knowing that you might go on 150 dates mm -hmm. or you might do this for years, but okay, I've been on tons of dates. I've got two first dates coming up this week. But who's to say that that second first date isn't the person for me? Right. What if I just gave up and was like, ugh, I'm done? Mm -hmm. Well, you can't do that. You can't. So if you really do want to find someone, you have everything in your life that you feel like is obviously not perfect, but career's good, kids are good, friendships are good, family's good, everything's kind of, mm -hmm. what's missing? Well, I would love a partner. So I would love to find that connection with someone. Unfortunately, that means you have to date and date and date and mm -hmm. date. Mm -hmm. You do. My and husband's a huge proponent of that because he said, I know the love of my life is out there, Tiffy. He said, I thought about it and thought about it and I knew she was out there. I've just been looking all this mm -hmm. time and I'm like, golly, I mean, that's some deep stuff. He goes, didn't you think that? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I kind of think that. And then part of me thinks like it's a, a timing thing it could be so, you know, mm -hmm. the guys that I, some guys I've dated previously, that was a great fit, but. I wasn't ready or they weren't ready or whatever. It's like, well, I mean, maybe if we dated in two years, it would have been just the best match ever. Yes. So I just am trying to manifest the qualities I want mm -hmm. and like journal and just really keeping that mindful and not just be like, well, he's really hot and he's got a boat <laughs> and a, a ripped stomach. So why don't we, it's like, it needs to be, you really need to have all the qualities that you're looking for or it's not it's not going to bring you the value that you're hoping absolutely absolutely because everyone is different everyone's needs are different yeah sure you know i mean i just just i always tell women be yourself do not settle oh, completely be yourself and also <sighs> if i go on one more date where the guy says and i do not look better than my pictures my pictures look exactly like me i'm not misrepresenting nope one time the guys always say, you look so much better than your pictures. And I'm like, okay, I don't, but I think the difference is I show up looking like my pictures. And wow. so many people show up and it's old pictures. It was 20 pounds ago. They have brown hair, used to be blonde or whatever. And the guys are thrown off. Like I would just try to represent yourself as honestly as possible on these apps because the, there's nothing more disappointing than showing up to a first date and being like, oh no, <laughs> this isn't right. what they showed me. And I feel like Almost every guy has a story like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the girls do as much. I also right. like a little FaceTime screening, pre-screen. Pre-screen. Yeah. Like <laughs> chit chat a little, see, right. you know, what's the vibe here? And then before I drive to South Lake and meet them halfway, because sure. no one seems to be in Fort Worth. Yeah. I feel like everyone I'm matching with is like Dallas, Frisco, Plano. Like, right. We do. That's annoying. But <laughs> at least we have a lot of options here and a lot of cities. You do. And a lot of eligible men you do if you look 
Uh, you know what? It's going to it's going to land in your lap, sister. It will. I know it is. It, it, it absolutely will. And it might take some time and that's okay. That's right. You got time. For sure. Yes. Well, to all of our sisters out there that are looking for love, intentional love. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that word. Intentional love. You know, listen to this podcast because let me tell you what. It's there. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having oh me. Oh my gosh. We could talk about 10,000 other things. Oh, yes, we could. Yes, we could. But we wanted to talk to, to everyone about dating and single mommyhood. And there's so yeah. many of them out there. So how can we find you? Oh, you can find me on Instagram <laughs> at uh, Style Duplicated. Is That's the account where I'm always talking about my dates very openly. And also I like to find a lot of hilarious things I find on Bumble and Hinge and screenshot, scratch out the face, make a little jokey joke. <laughs> um, that People love that. They're always like, do that more. We love to see what's on the apps. So um, Style Duplicated. And then my photography page is at Page Walker Photography. And that's really all you need to know. That's all you need to know. You can find everything from that. You can. You can really search. For, you, know, you don't have to go very far. So, no. well, thank you so much for joining us. And everyone, thank you for joining us today. Hey, get out there in that dating world. If you're eligible to date, I guess that's the best thing to say. That <laughs> everyone follow along. Hey, we're on new YouTube now at Tiffany Blackman. And you can see everything that Paige. Hey, look at Paige. She's available. And uh, follow me along at Tiffany C. Blackman. Everyone have a great day and keep being fabulous.